Hey everybody and welcome back. Hopefully by now you've got your cluster up and running. That means you've got three nodes that are HA masters and two nodes that are set up as workers and that Nginx deployment you can access. So that's great, but what about having a management interface for it, similar to something like Portana? Now, bizarrely, Portainer actually supports Kubernetes, and that's something I want to come on to in later videos. But for today, we're going to deploy Rancher. And the reason I've chosen Rancher is because it's made by the same people that make K3S, the same people that are going to make Longhorn and Fleet in later videos as well. So today, we're going to deploy Rancher onto our cluster, and that will enable us to administrate this through the web browser. So to do that, it's really straightforward, and I'm going to talk you through all of the steps and what they mean on that journey. We're going to be doing this from the same admin VM that you used in the previous video. And again, this is not joined to the cluster, and it doesn't have to be a separate VM. It can be anything that you've got on your network. But the important thing is it has that cube config file, which is what we created in the previous video. So I'm going to assume you've got all that set up. Let's get into deployment. So here I'm connected to the VM that we used to set up the cluster in the previous video. So if I run some commands here, we can just validate that. So if I do kubectl get nodes, we should see the five nodes that we set up. That's right. And if we do kubectl get pods, we should see the nginx that we set up as well in the previous video. So now we want to be able to administrate this through our web browser. So the tool that we're going to use for that is Rancher and we're gonna do this through a Helm deployment. Now, that's a new concept to us. So Helm is basically a pre-packaged deployment method for Kubernetes. So we can do some simple commands once we've installed Helm, and it takes away a lot of the configuration for us, but still gives us the flexibility to create customized deployments itself. So what it does is basically deploys all of the YAMLs, and those are usually pre-configured but we can supersede those values by supplying our own. That sounds a bit complicated. We'll come on to that more in later videos, but it's a really straightforward way of deploying and it's pretty much how Enterprise does it. The other way to do it is basically to strip away the Helm and use the underlying manifest files. And we'll also be doing that in a future video. So the first thing we need to do is to install Helm. So then we can add the Helm Rancher repository. So heading over to the Helm site, we just need to run three commands. Thankfully, this includes a convenient script. So the first thing is we download the executable, we modify it to be able to run it, and then we do the actual execution of the script. So let's go into our terminal and do that now. So running the first command, that's really quick, and it's downloaded the script. We're going to change the permissions to it. Once that's applied, we're in a position to be able to run this. So if we do dot slash and then get tab, press return, it's going to go away now and install Helm. So I'll see you on the other side and then we'll validate that the installation was correct. So now if we do a Helm and then a version, we can see that it installed and we're running version 3.13.1. That's great. We're ready to begin installing Rancher. So back onto the Rancher website, we've got some options here. Firstly, we need to install the repository. So this is a bit like anything you do in Ubuntu when you're installing something that it doesn't recognize. You need to add the repository first. Now there's three options here. There's the latest, there's the stable, and there's the alpha. Now, because we automatically deployed the latest version of K3S, that pulled down version 1.27. So unfortunately at the moment with Rancher's deployment cycle, only the alpha is gonna work with this. And that comes with all the joys of using an alpha release of software. So if you don't want to use the alpha release because it might have issues in the future with upgrade paths, et cetera, and it's just not as well supported, you can go back to the previous video and where we pulled down the latest version of K3S, just pin it to an older version, say, I don't know, 1.25 or 1.26, and then you should be able to use the stable release here. The important thing is the execution of those steps is going to be exactly the same. You're just simply going to change one variable. So in this video, we're going to use the latest and greatest, the alpha. And it's actually quite interesting because it gives us a sneak peek of what Ranch is going to look like potentially in the next release. So it's as simple as copying this command here and then pasting it back into our terminal. So when we run this, it's going to add that to our repository list. It's been added. That's great. So now we need to move down and we need to create a namespace. 
Now, namespaces are a way for splitting up your Kubernetes deployments, containers, etc. So good practice would dictate that you have a namespace for each service you want to deploy. It's a bit like network segmentation, i.e. you're putting each deployment into its own namespace, and then you can do funny things with rules that apply specifically to certain namespaces. We're not gonna to touch on that in this video, but in the future, we will be using namespaces specifically to dictate what can and cannot happen within our cluster. So copy and paste this command into your terminal. Now the namespace is created, we need to add some more dependencies. So for this to work, we need to generate some certificates. Now we're gonna use the Rancher self-generated certificates because we haven't created our own and we don't need to. The ones that Rancher will generate are perfectly fine for this setup. But to do that, we need to install something called Cert Manager. So let's go ahead, look at the documentation and install Cert Manager. So to install Cert Manager, we simply need to follow the instructions here. So we're gonna apply these manifest files. So I mentioned earlier about manifest files and these are basically templates, a bit like a Docker Compose for deploying an application. In this case, it's Cert Manager. So we want to double click and copy this URL and we're gonna paste that into our terminal. So when we hit return, that should go away, pull that down and apply it to our cluster. That's version 1.11 of Cert Manager. Next, we need to add the Jetstack Helm repository. So this is exactly like we did before. And once that's done, it's been added to the repository, we're ready to go on to the next step. So now again, because we've added a repository, we want to update the repository so that we can then install it. So paste that in and pull the update. And you can see that Rancher Alpha and Jetstack are now added into our repository list. So now we're at the stage where we can go and install Cert Manager and that will allow us to progress onto the next stage of installing the Rancher web UI. So to do that, we simply click Helm install Cert Manager and copy that, paste it into here and hit return. That's gonna go away, use Helm to install Cert Manager and then once it's completed, it should be up and running and we can validate that that's taken place. This might take a little time to install, so I'll see you on the other side. So now that's installed, let's validate it did it correctly. And we can do that by querying the pods in the namespace cert manager. Because if you look above here, it did create namespace. So it put all of these containers in the cert manager namespace. So let's copy this and just see if we get what's on there. So when we run this command, yeah, we get three containers and they're all running. So perfect, we're ready to move on to the next step. Now, this is the bit where we install Rancher and do pay careful attention if you're using the alpha version like in this video, because you'll need to add one additional parameter. If you don't put it, you're gonna get an error, but don't worry, you can fix it just by adding that parameter. And that parameter is the dash dash devil for developer. So this is the version that we're going to install. However, copy the one above and just add that tag in. And also importantly, make sure that you change here to the version we're running. So I'll show that now on screen. So paste this into your command and then we want to go back and just edit some of this stuff. So I'm gonna change this to rancher.jimsgarage.co.uk. So that looks fine. And then I'm gonna to go to the top line and I'm gonna put the release that we're using, which is alpha. So alpha, so dash alpha. And then if you remember, we need to put space dash devl. Now we should be in a good position to run this. So let's hit return. Oops, I didn't put double dash. So let's go back and let's change that to a double dash. And now when we hit return, it should start installing it. Yes, perfect. We don't have any errors. So that's now deployed, but it's not yet up and running. This can take a while to spin up. So let's check back at the instructions and we can see this deployment in action. So if we go back to here and we want to do this command here. So it's gonna use cube control and it's gonna specify the namespace cattle system, which <laughs> they're all cow analogies. Um, this is the namespace that Rancher will install on. So at the moment, you can see that there's nothing available. Zero of three updated replicas are available. So just let this run and it will update when it's finished. So I'm gonna leave it here and I'll catch you in a minute when this is deployed. 
So now that's completed and it took almost 10 minutes to do on my machine but that's impacted massively by internet bandwidth when it's trying to pull down these containers and also the horsepower of your VMs i.e. how many cores, how much RAM they've got. But now that's successfully installed we can move on to the next step. Just to validate that that worked properly and we now have three up we can run the following command which will just check the deployment itself. And as you can see, we've now met the replica count. So we've got three running in our cluster. That's one on each of those master nodes. So now that's done, we're pretty much ready, but we've got one issue. So if we do a cube CTL, get services, and we specify the name dash N as cattle system, we'll see that it's not exposed with the load balancer. So we've got Rancher with a cluster IP, but there's no external IP. So that's what we need to do. And if you remember in the script in the previous video, you can see that I exposed a service by its deployment name. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. So we need to put in the following command. So this command is gonna call kubectl. It's gonna call the expose command, which says, hey, I wanna expose a service. It's gonna expose the Rancher service. So that's this one here and it's going to create a new name for this service and it's going to be called rancher-lb, load balancer. I'm going to expose it on port 443 because I want HTTPS. We're going to get a cert error because it's a self-generated certificate, but don't worry about that for now. The really important bit here is that type load balancer. And if you remember from the previous video, anything with a specification of load balancer, kubevip is listening for that, it's going to pick it up and it's going to assign an IP address from the pool we created in our K3S deployment. Next, it's going to apply this to the namespace of cattle system because that's where it resides. And it's going to be stored as service slash rancher LB and it's going to be exposed. So let's run this command. And if we now check the services, we can see that Rancher LB is here and it's 192.168.3.61, which is the first one available after my Nginx, which is on 60. So let's copy this and then head into our browser and fingers crossed, we're gonna reach the Rancher UI. So if I put that into a new tab and I paste it and go, bingo, there we go. Let's click advanced. Move on, ignore the warning. And here we are, perfect. So the bootstrap password by default was admin and you can tweak that in the previous config, but I'm just gonna put in admin here and I'm gonna leave everything else as is. Use a randomly generated password for this. And I'm just gonna tick that I accept the end user license agreement and hit continue. Now, when you hit continue, you're gonna be taken into your cluster. So this is the cluster we've spun up, and in my instance, because I've assigned each one four cores, there are 20 cores, there are five, and there's 19 gigabytes available because each one has four, five fours, yeah, rounding errors and <laughs> rounding errors and kilobits, etc. It comes out at 19 gigabytes, which is exactly what I expect. Now, don't worry if this breaks almost instantaneously, and hopefully I can prove that now. Yeah, there we go, it's reset. That's because in the background, once you've created and signed in and you've generated those keys, it needs to redeploy itself and distribute itself over those masternodes. So just give it a couple of minutes to spin up. And once it's finished, we should be good to go. We can actually check this happening if we go back into our cube control and then have a look at what pods are being deployed. So after some time, this should come back up when you hit refresh and you just need to go back into the dashboard. And so now if I click on local, you can see our cluster in a bit more detail. So here you can see there are five nodes and if I click on here, you'll see the five nodes, all those IP addresses are right. And you can see here, we've got three masters and we've got two workers, which is exactly what we had before. Importantly now, you can see things like the CPU usage, the RAM and the number of pods running on each one. And if you wanted to click on one, for example, you could see all the services that are running on there. So you can actually see that the Nginx spun up is on our worker node. And that's great, we'll actually pin that later on. You can see that Cert Manager's running on here, the Helm operator, so listening for those Helm controls where we installed Helm. And you can see the number of images it's downloaded, so you can see all these images it's pulled, so that's the same as Docker really. So if you look in Portainer or whatever, or you just do Docker images list, you'll see all of the images that have been pulled on that machine. 
So also in Rancher, we're not going to get into it too deep. We're going to come back to this in a future video. You can actually look at things like the App Store. And here you can do one-click deploys for most of the applications you've probably heard of. So things like Longhorn. It's going to deploy it through a Helm installation. So you simply need to click on Longhorn and then click Install. And the good news is you can actually specify some variables as you're doing that. Because under the bonnet, there's basically just a YAML file that you can tweak. It's a values.yaml for a Helm chart. There's also things in here like traffic and there's monitoring, one-click deploys, etc. A whole host of stuff. And the good news is you can actually add more repositories to here. So there's some community-led ones which are great. And you can actually use this to deploy a lot of common applications. However, we're not going to do that because we're going to do it with the manifest method. Because that means we don't have a dependency on the library being up to date. Often the community-led ones, they survive on a wing and a prayer. And we want to make sure that we're using modern versions and we can easily upgrade as and when required. Other things we can do within the Rancher UI, so we can look at what workloads we've got, i.e. what deployments. We've got the Nginx one here. If you're thinking, where's everything else? That's just because by default it uses the user namespace. So these are the ones that we've created as a user. They aren't the system ones. If you clicked all namespaces, you're going to get everything that's running in the background of Rancher. So you can see here things like Cert Manager, KubeVip, um, what else have we got? We've got Rancher itself running here and it's quite cool if you click on Rancher. You'll see all the pods running and you'll see that actually there's one running on each of our master nodes under here. We don't have any persistent storage volumes or PVCs. Um, we'll come onto those later but have a read up if you haven't already. Other things you can do around service discovery, so ingresses and services. So we created a service to be able to access this and you can see all of your services in here. Don't worry, we're coming back to this in later videos. I just wanted to give you a whistle stop tour of all of the information that's in the Rancher GUI. So now that we have Rancher GUI set up, feel free to have a play and deploy some applications. I recommend you go ahead and make some snapshots of your VMs just in case you break things. So thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully now you have Rancher installed and you can access and monitor your cluster through the web GUI. And you can also do a ton of cool stuff like deploying applications. In fact, you can even create this cluster that we've done via code through Rancher itself. I don't like that approach because I like to be able to specify it in code and make sure that when I run it each time, it's gonna end up with the same result. If you're doing it through Rancher itself, you're prone to human error. So in the next video, we're actually gonna start deploying some services, things like traffic, so we can actually start to put things behind traffic like we had in our existing Docker setup. So if you like this video, you know what to do please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and drop a comment below if you're having any issues. Take care everybody and I'll see you on the next video.